Welcome to the Messy Antics Podcast, a podcast about all things Messianic Judaism. Each episode, we will be sharing our opinions as we tackle some of the biggest issues in Messianic Judaism. Now, here's your hosts, Rabbis Eric, David, Jonathan, and Toby. Shalom, everyone. Uh, Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever, wherever you are. We're happy that you're with us here on the Messy Antics Podcast. I'm Rabbi Toby, and with me is Rabbi David, Rabbi Eric, and Rabbi Jonathan. And uh, oh, this week we uh, we're revisiting a a, a subject, a topic we've uh, talked about uh, previously, be, because we are getting into we're getting close to the month of November. We're recording this uh, episode towards the end of October. We're getting close to November, so we know that that means we're getting close to December. And December for us uh, messy antics, uh, we know that that is conference season uh, for. If you're in the southeast, right. you know, well, let and, me say. and because we're rabbis, yeah. It's, so we know that if you're in the southeast, December is for the IMCS MJAA uh, Southeast Regional Conference, uh, and we know that the rabbis' conference is in January, and we also have the UMJC uh, leadership conference in, in January. January. So yeah. it's 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 a pretty action packed. It's our postseason, if you could, if you want to put it that way. And it's just and um. We just want to have it a. It is because we just came out of high holy days. Yeah. And now we're.
here from everywhere in the country to just unify and worship. Right. It would be amazing. And so so when I go, I absolutely love mm-hmm. those times. Uh, and and second to that would be the fellowship. Now, I love the classes, and I go to the classes, and I learn from these different rabbis and teachers. And I love hearing Paul Wilbur or uh, some of the other uh, people that are singing and the sure. different and the up and coming artists who get, are given a, sh- a shot to uh, to share their music. But there's just something unique about that experience of worship that uh, it it's the payoff for everything else, right? One of, for me, one of the most, I think, impressive times out of all the years that I've gone to the Southeast region in particular, which has been most of my life, um, is, so when I was growing up in the YMJ and the Young Messianic Jewish Alliance, um, it was it was weird. It was always this weird thing because you'd have these families come together for the conference, but then you would have, like, so the YMJ does their own kind of mini conference in the conference, which is great. Like, my kids are both YMJ age, and so. Yeah, it really is like a separate yeah, world yeah. for them. And they love it because they get to go, they're seeing their friends, they get fed spiritually, they worship with their, their, their peers, and so on. But when, when I was growing up in the YMJ and, and my early years as a rabbi, the YMJ at the conferences had their own Shabbat service, their, their own Torah service, separate from the main Shabbat Torah service for the, the main conference. And it was always weird. Like when I was in the YMJ, I never went to the YMJ one because I wanted to go to the regular one. Like I wanted to be with my family, with my you know congregations and, and such in the, the regular, the main service and, and participate there because I really liked the idea of Shabbat being spent together with your family and so on. Uh, so I never really went to the YMJ Torah service. And then uh, when I became a rabbi, I don't, I don't remember who. Somebody found out that I can sing reasonably okay. And so they asked me, and that I love doing liturgy, and so they asked me to start leading the, the liturgical service for the, the, the YMJ Torah service. So for a few years, I led the, the liturgy for the YMJ Torah service, and then a couple of times they had me speak in their, their Shabbat service and all. But but it always felt weird that the, the teens and 20-somethings were separate from their families on Shabbat morning. And so for a number of years, I had been like communicating hey, it would be awesome if we could do this big intergenerational joint service and get some of the YMJ involved up on the main stage and so on. And and it was funny because for, for several years I would hear from, the, and this was my early days as a rabbi, and even before that I was having these conversations with people, but I would always hear well from the rabbis, oh, we would love to do that, but the YMJ doesn't want to do it. And then from the YMJ leadership, it was, oh, we would love to do that, but the rabbis don't want to do it. I was like, okay. So one year I brought it up, and but, but this time, and I'll be perfectly honest, I was kind of conniving and shady in the way I handled this, <clears throat> just throwing that out there also. But I was like, I'm going to see what happens if I kind of, you know, as people say today, I, you know, bring the receipts. And so I sent, I sent an email to the rabbis and said, hey, you know, it'd be really cool if we did this. But I also sent the exact same email to the YMJ and said, hey, it'd be cool if we did this. And then they both came back at the same time and said, oh, we would love to, but they won't do it. And I went, oh, well, funny you said that and kind of shipped their responses back. And they were both kind of like, oh, we can do this, I guess. And the, now there were some rabbis who were very much like, this will never work. This is going to be terrible. It's a, these kids don't want to do this. They don't want to be It's like, no, we've been doing this by ourselves for years. Like these kids want this. Uh, and, and enough of the rabbis really want it. Let's see what happens. And so it developed and, and, and there was definitely like some tension. S- some of the rabbis weren't necessarily so thrilled about it and, and what have you. But that Shabbat service, that Saturday morning Torah service was by far, that first year was by far one of the most, as a matter of fact, I think you and uh, Rabbi Toby, I think you and Brooke were leading worship that year. Maybe. If I remember correctly. What was year one was of that? The, uh, Yes, okay. <laughs> it, 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 it was years. We led for okay. a couple it was years. years ago, uh, but I, I think it was. I think you guys were leading, but nonetheless. So no, yeah, sorry. They uh, they came up. You know, the the rabbis led the service. Some of the the young people were involved in some of the liturgy, and and uh, and where there were probably oh geez, I don't know, fifteen twenty kids up on the stage uh, that were involved with the service and different pieces and stuff. And the Torah service itself, when the procession went on very literally took on a life of its own because everybody was involved like the kids the the teens and 20 somethings that were involved in the surf took it on themselves to jump into the Torah procession behind the Torah scrolls and follow them around the room and when they came back up I mean there were literally I, there were probably 
close to 800 people, seven, 800 people in the room. And I would say probably 300, 400 people were dancing around the Torah together because the, the kids got everybody in, excited and started dragging people out. And, and it was just absolutely unreal. And some of the same rabbis that were saying going into it, this is never going to work. This is not going to, it's going to be terrible. Da, da, da. We're walking off stage going, I'm so glad we had this idea. This was great. This is awesome. We need to do this. And, and it became this whole other thing. But it was this absolutely, still to this day, that was one of my favorite moments out of any conference I've ever been to, maybe out of any service I've ever been in, was was watching this you know intergenerational service where, as Rabbi Eric talks about all the time, you know there was always this argument that the young people wanting to step into leadership just wanted to take the reins and take the pulpit from everybody. And the young people were going, no, we want to work with you until it's time for us to take. We don't want to take over. And he always uses the imagery of the uh, the, the relay race with the baton that there's a you know split period of time, a short period of time where where both the the handoff and the receiver are carrying the baton together in the race. Mm-hmm. And it was very literally that image in the service and it was just absolutely mind blowing and still to this day it's one of my favorite things and it's still a part of not only the southeast region but it became a part of the the way things are done at messiah conference now and and so on uh, but this big intergenerational families are together and worshiping it's an absolutely unreal experience and you'll get to hopefully see that this year if you make yourself uh make your way down to orlando for the uh, southeast regional mj southeast regional by the way december 15th through 17th yes. this year friday saturday sunday december 15th through 17th mm-hmm. southeast regional at the rosen plaza hotel you can go to mj AA.org, and we'll drop that in the comment section so you can register online for both the hotel and the conference uh, to and do that. And if you're a congregational leader, rabbi, messianic rabbi, if you're involved in leadership of a messianic congregation, um, uh, whether you're uh, part of one of the major organizations or, or not, we encourage you to also go check out the IMCS website, imcs.org, and, and get the details on the IMCS Rabbis Conference. Come connect and meet with the IMCS rabbis and, and build a relationship. Get your rabbi, if you're if you're an elder or something, get your rabbi to, to sign off on you coming and them coming with you and participating. The UMJC, go to umjc.org for the UMJC Winter Leadership Conference, which is like the UMJC's Rabbi's Conference type of thing. Um, you know, bring your your elders, your worship leaders, bring your uh, your rabbis and congregational leaders, and 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 go and join these same thing. You get the opportunity to build relationship and fellowship with people who are very literally doing the same thing you're doing, and uh, and get to be sewn into in tremendous ways. One of my most impactful moments at a Southeast conference is actually a result of that combining of the youth with the uh, adults. Uh, And that's that as a result of those Shabbat services, they started opening the doors for younger people from the YMJA, the older younger people, to actually share messages during the main services. So it wasn't just the senior rabbis that had opportunity to speak to the entire congregation, but now some of the younger ones. And one of the uh, speaking uh, people, people speaking, was, I think her name is Nisa. Uh, But she was talking about her trip to Israel. She had gone to Israel. And on her trip, uh, they were going, traveling around, and it was the last day, and, and they were... And they all got on the bus, and they went, and, and they, they didn't know where they were going, but they uh, they were brought to a place where they actually walked on the road to Emmaus. But they didn't know they were on the road to Emmaus. Mm. And, and she was sharing about all of the conversations about, you know, here we are. We got all dressed up for something special because they, they told them they were going to do something special. So they all got dressed up in, in nice clothes and everything. And now they're getting off the bus and they're walking through this, you know, natural area, not cobblestone. And they're going through bushes and they're walking and they're having these conversations about how dissatisfied they were at that moment with what was happening at that moment and then they get through the other side and there's an opening and the uh, Messianic rabbi who was at, waiting for them there said do you know where you just were and they said no and he said you just walked on the road to Emmaus you were just and and he and it just became so clear to all of the young people who were there that they had just experienced something very similar to how the disciples who are on the road to Emmaus, walking with Messiah, yet caught up in the 
the tragedy of the day and the problems of life and all the things and didn't realize that Yeshua had been walking with them the whole time. And, and she presented this in such a powerful way that it, it will forever stay in my mind. And it, again, this is uh, one of the young people who was just sharing her heart uh, and her experience with the whole community that would not have been given an opportunity just a few years before because the main services were always spoken by the rabbis, by congregational leaders, and not given the opportunity. But I will never, I, I, if I live to be 120, I will never forget the moment she said, we were on the road to Emmaus, and it was like the you know the breaking of the bread where Yeshua broke the bread and they realized who he was. Yeah. Uh, it was so powerful. It makes me, not to bring us back to another episode on uh, The Chosen, which we should do another episode on The Chosen soon, but nonetheless, well, it makes me think four of... Season is coming out in Yeah, a few it's coming months. out soon. Makes me think of, we were just watching, we've been watching The Chosen with our youth group and, and discussing the imagery and what's happening in it, and the episode we just watched uh, this Saturday night with the youth was uh, season two, episode three, I think it was, mm-hmm. um, with uh, where Yeshua was, you know, ministering and he's got these long lines and crowds and the disciples and all it kind of focuses on just their internal conversations around a fire and, and what have you. And they kind of get heated and they're arguing and the whole thing's about to blow up. And, and here comes Yeshua after spending hours upon hours upon hours ministering. Uh, and they're arguing and bickering over the most minute, stupid things that doesn't matter in the least in the grand scheme of things. And here comes Yeshua literally with other people's blood on him. He's he's just completely depleted and beaten. You know, the humanity of Yeshua completely beaten and, and, and depleted and, and has no energy left, wiped out. And he's just like, he walks up. They're literally at each other's throats. When they hear him coming, they all stop and look. And he's like just barely moving along. And he goes... Good night, and goes straight to his tent to try and get ready to go to bed. And everybody's like, "He's out here doing something phenomenal, literally world changing." We're bickering over the dumbest possible things. Uh, and you bringing up that story made me think of that scene. Right. It, it, to me, that was just such a powerful, powerful experience with this young lady sharing. And I hope her name was Nisa. I, I, I and if it wasn't, if whoever listens remembers who it was. Uh, please you know, drop it in the comments because I want to give credit where credit's due. But it was one of the most, of all the messages I've heard at conference, which there have been some amazing, powerful messages, I, I will never forget that particular message uh, and, and the power of just somebody, a young person, having that kind of a revelation to share with the community. Yeah, I always like that it's, uh, a lot of times it falls either at the start or during Hanukkah in some way. And those, um, you know, because the Hebrew calendar is different, sometimes it, it can, the conference will be, you know, either before or after it. But uh, I think this year it is during Hanukkah. Um, yeah, it, it falls right as Hanukkah ends. Yeah, so that'll be cool. We'll be right in the midst of that. So it's always fun to celebrate Hanukkah with um, the, 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 the greater Messianic community to have an opportunity to do that is is something I, I really um, I enjoy. If, and I think that, huh? I was going to say, I wonder if they'll bring out that big uh, Hanukkah. I don't know, but I think that with everything that's going on in uh, Israel right now, I think that it's going to be a very uh, special conference to go mm-hmm. to. I think if you can yeah. go, I definitely think you should go. And interestingly enough, you know, they have themes every year, and this theme was already set before um, – uh, anything started anything off. started happening in Israel and the the theme is Hatikva which I think man that's really powerful you know God knows what he's doing so I think it's going to be really special this year yeah, and for those that don't know Hatikva is oh, not yeah. only the word for hope the hope but it's also the national anthem of Israel so yeah and I want to say along with Rabbi David who and, and I think Rabbi Toby who invited people to come even if you're not MJAA, if you're part of the union or part of one of the other tikkun or one of the other, make, make an effort to come. It is powerful when we get together in unity uh, to these services. Yeah, and there is a uh, – and, and I think that – I know we opened up really really uh, on a lighthearted note, and, and then we, um, we kind of went into some of the more uh, serious and, and, and really – uh, powerful and 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 and, and spirit filled things that happen, but it really is a time you have a lot of fun, and there's um th- there is a lot of wonderful stories that we have that have come out of that. Um, my kids, you know, I wish I had brought started bringing my kids sooner. 
That's another thing. It's uh, my kids love it. My kids love it just because, um, and they're aged. They're they're um, six and nine, and um, so last year they would have been five and eight. You know, but uh, for them, the Rosen Plaza was like this castle, and uh, right. <laughs> all the people were so nice, and uh, oh, the pool and stuff that they just. And I was exhausted uh, by the end of every day. I think I went to bed around nine o'clock. I swam which is, five or six miles. I think know. the first time I had went to bed <laughs> and the last time since you know since then, yeah. but uh, we, I was worn out. But it's really good. So what I'm saying is, is it, it oftentimes when the services are over. You can um, – many people go to bed, but if you come out at any hour of the night, it could be 3 in the morning, and there will be people, rabbis, out there, and they're just hanging out. And I think a lot of it is because they don't – we only get to do this like once or twice a year. Right. You know? And we and we do get, like Rabbi David was saying, we do get consumed with yeah. what's happening at home. So we have – it's funny to say it, but we have – Friends who like we may say like Shabbat Shalom or something once in a while to people over the internet or over text, mm-hmm. but we see them at these conferences and it's like like you pick up where you left off. At. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you almost never would have known that we live apart because we we, we just develop such right. close ties with these people. Right, like, and I think it there. and it, it bolsters my confidence and because like we said at the, towards the beginning of the show, um, this episode. Um, messianic synagogues are not um, physically oftentimes you know like churches are very um, concentrated uh, and locally uh, location wise I'm not saying that right but you know what I mean like the closest messianic synagogue to us uh, is Brit Am, if I'm not mistaken, David. That's almost well, we've an got, hour. Yeah, we've got Brit Am about 45 minutes to an the, hour, yeah, one direction, and then Tree yeah. of Life and uh, Beta Israel that's, about 45 minutes an hour the other direction. That's exponentially longer. Yeah. And, you know, Brooke and I, my wife and I were having a conversation. I'm not being critical of the church. I'm only stating a fact. And Brooke, my wife, turned to me last night and said, you know, we have a lot of friends and family in the church, and I can tell that what's going on in Israel is not impacting them the way it should. Yeah. And so I guess – I'm sorry. So I guess in some ways I am being a little critical because if you don't care – I don't care if your church or Messianic synagogue. If you don't care about Israel, you got a problem. <laughs> but um, the thing is, though, when when I go to these conferences, I see – Lots of different faces that I hardly ever see. Right. And I think, okay, not if, when things start getting really tough, I know I'm not alone. It's not just my little congregation. Right. right. It's it, There's many of us, and they're in front of the cameras, and they're up on stage saying the things that they should be saying. Yeah. That it's not, it's, it's not very popular, you would think. Anyway, I don't want to make this all about Israel, but what I'm saying is, is that I get around these people and I feel strengthened. Right, and one of the other cool things that uh, that people get to experience yeah. is that rabbis are people. Right. You know, when you go to the conferences and you're you're sitting at a table outside the uh, the restaurant or or out by the pool or whatever, and you just get to spend relational time with different leaders rather than just sitting there looking at them from your. Uh, chair as they're on the bima or watching from your internet mm-hmm. you know couch on the internet but you you get to sit down and talk and see these people as humans as, as people and, and get to see the rest of their their life their kids their wives they're you know acting like normal people because we are it, the the one of the things that people don't realize is that uh, that we're human and they like hot tubs <laughs> So, so some, once, some of them. There's a like, certain squad of rabbis that, you know, well, we made a big deal. Me and Jonathan made a big deal. Was it rabbis conference we made a big deal? Because me and Jonathan were hanging out with our families by the pool, and the hot tub was empty. And I said, Jonathan, this is our chance. This is our moment. This is our moment, God. It's like the light was shining on it. And we all get in. So it's me and my wife and 
there because she right. was she Catherine was working. Was there. She wasn't but you in, and Catherine were there. She was there. And I mean, I got a good three to five minutes in there before my kids were like, all right, I'm going to get back to the ball. But anyway, so <laughs> we had to get back in the pool. But I was like, I did it. I sat in the hot tub that all the rabbis sit in. And, yeah. As a rabbi, you sat in the hot tub. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. God's like, now it's time. You can do it. No, no. <laughs> but, yeah, but no, it, it's, yeah, it's, you it's the hot tub a, anointing. It's, yeah. an oppor- <laughs> it's an opportunity for people to be people. Yeah. Immersion. Uh, and yeah. that's that's really And powerful. that's why, like, if you stay like after services you know uh, especially like after the saturday night service like if you run by the lobby area like there will be a handful of rabbis who have gone to the the bar already and have ordered a drink and just you know if you plop down beside them and start talking they'll you know there you'll find out that they're just they're there to relax and have a good time and you might learn something or you might yeah. ha- or, or you might indulge in like a lot of jokes and you know um uh, figure out that you know some of them have a, a, hu- a humorous side and oh, yeah. some of them might not and
Orlando. The, the name of the hotel alone, Rosen, tells you that the ownership of the hotel and that whole, whole uh, hospitality group is Jewish. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of Jewish events that occur there. There are uh, uh, Chabad events that occur there. There are different right. things that are uh, – they have a full kosher kitchen uh, that, that they uh, have opened over the last however many years. They've got you know Hanukkah dis- d- d- uh, decoration on display. There's a lot of Jewish people in and out of the hotel at all times. Go into it, and, 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 and that's not even – and I'm talking about Jewish people being in there, but there's it's, it's a major hotel. There will be a lot of people from all over the world, different walks of life, different face, face, different whatever, you're there to be a part of the light of Messiah. Let the light of Messiah shine through you when, when, as Rabbi Toby said, these divine appointments, I like to call them, appear before you. Take the opportunity to roll with it. Mm-hmm. Don't think you're too busy or you've got to get to the next class or you've got to get let God speak through you in the moment and let God speak to you in the moment right. as you're making your way through these, uh, these oh, conferences. Yeah. And, and so at this year's conference... Mm-hmm. Uh, the worship leaders, we got Paul Wilbur, who's going to be there, the Nesbits, which are a Jewgrass band. They're, okay. they're a bluegrass messianic group. I look forward to hearing that. Uh, Shea Wilbur will be there. Raleigh Washington is doing the yeshiva this year, all that. But, but when you go, don't just go for those people, but immerse yourself into it. If, if you've never been a part of, of a Davidic dance circle, Get up out your chair and get and give it a try. Become yeah. part of what's going on. You won't feel singled out. There's so many. Right. There's so many people. It, it won't be. And and just uh, become part of what's going on. It'll it'll change your life. And uh, we encourage you to do that. So, again, we're going to put in the comments the uh, MJA Conference Southeast Regional. You can go to mja.org to check that out. You can go to the UMJC dot uh, org uh, uh, website and, and check out their leadership conference as well as their summer conference which will be next summer the IMCS rabbis conference if you're a messianic leader and you're not involved in an organization or maybe you are but you're looking for uh, some other input into your walk the IMC, IAMCS.org to check that out uh, and just visit these and, and make a conference these conferences part of, of your daily are your yearly activities because it is uh, very much like having a Thanksgiving dinner with your family that you come away full when you're finished. Thank you for listening to the Messy Antics podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you can be notified every time we drop a new episode. And be sure to follow and interact with us on social media at Messy Antics Podcast. <laughs>